right, guys, and we're back today. Again, I have Kyle with me. Now, Kyle Dobbs is a strength and conditioning coach, but also is somewhat of a guru in my mind when it comes down to gait training, when it comes down to running mechanics and having the ability to transfer that over into athletic performance, not only for general people, but also for athletes of all kinds, especially for combat sport athletes. So what he's going to do is take us through some exercises that are going to enhance the athletic qualities that are going to be conducive for the sport or whatever sport you're playing and then he's going to go on to why it's important and also the exercises that can transfer over so kyle take it away when we start looking at gait what we're really looking at is a lateral compression strategy that you're using for forward propulsion so just breaking things down as simply as possible we're going to talk about early, mid, and late stance gates, right? So when we're looking at early gait, we're looking at ipsilateral, uh, hip flexion and shoulder extension, and then hip extension and shoulder flexion. So as we're coming into heel contact here, right? We've got hip flexion on this side, hip extension over here. We've got shoulder flexion, shoulder extension, and we're creating compression on this side, right? So as we come into our heel, then we're transitioning into mid stance, where now we're getting more flexion over here, right? And then transitioning into toe push off. So we've got essentially a compression, expansion, compression type scenario happening on the swing leg. And then we've got a compre or an expansion, compression, and expansion happening on the actual stance leg. So when we're doing this, our pelvis is doing different things. It's internally rotating and externally rotating. And our femurs are internally rotating and externally rotating as we're going through flexion and extension. People that aren't good at this end up pivoting their whole body to walk where they're just doing rotation here rather than separating their rib cage and their pelvis and, giving, and getting contralateral rotation, right? From a training perspective, when I start breaking this down for people, I do a few things. And one of the things I look at is a cross connect march where I'm simply bringing opposite knee to opposite elbow. So I'm gonna come here, right? I'm gonna drive this arm down to use my oblique and my lat to create compression along with this hip, along with this hip flexion. We're gonna be here, exhale, coming through, exhale, coming through, exhale. And as I do exhales on those, I'm also, I'm also gonna drive obliques to help get the compression and get that air out of my actual thorax. That's gonna mimic more of a late stance type compression strategy. If I wanna look more at the early to mid stance, I'm gonna break that down into an actual lunge. So now I'm looking at bringing it here, coming up, coming up, coming up. Right, so you'll see that I'm again crossing midline to get my elbow to my knee, and that's gonna get a lot of oblique on that hip flex side to stabilize the rib cage and the pelvis and bring them together as an anchor point for my movement. The other big thing I look at is actually moving laterally within the, the frontal plane, right? So when we're looking at lateral lunges, as an industry, we see a lot of pretty poor examples of what this looks like, where people are stepping out and forcing and driving this knee out laterally from the midline. What that's actually doing is shortening the glute rather than lengthening it, and it's deleveraging it, right? So what we're actually gonna do to create more propulsion for change of direction is we're gonna step out and keep a nice vertical shin, get a little bit more internal rotation of this femur, get a little more hip flexion so we can externally rotate and extend out of that range of motion. So to start doing this, the thing that I work with a lot of people is just getting into a shift where we're driving opposite, right? Contralateral extension. And really trying to sit back into this back pocket and find our instep of our foot, right? So we're just here, getting a little rotation, rotation, rotation feeling adductors, having them work for us and getting our glutes to push us over laterally through that range of motion. If I wanna turn this into a lateral lunge, again, I can get a nice wide base here and drive here and just drive out, right? And really try to focus on moving through the actual hip, getting some adductor on the bottom there and then working through on the other side too, driving through that heel 
driving through that instep. From there, if we want to make it more dynamic and more ballistic, we can juggle the kettlebell and do hand switches. So now we can make it a little more rhythmic, get the pelvis outside of the actual foot line. dynamic component to it. All right guys, so there you have it. Now, I know you've seen some of these exercises that I've done with my fighters, and this is the man that I actually took it from. So I'm gonna give him full credit right now. All right, go ahead, check out Kyle on his Instagram. Kyle, what's this name? It's Compound Performance with an underscore. Kyle, don't forget the underscore. Yeah. Remember that. All right guys, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification, hit the like button, make sure you hit the comments. If you don't know what ipsilateral means or thorax means, you can go ahead and ask me down there. Or maybe Kyle will jump on and explain a little bit more in the detail. Maybe. Maybe. See you again next time.